in our previous video we have uh, discussed about google cloud st storage theoretically so in this demonstration video practically let's understand about the google cloud storage and the other components that we have discussed right regarding the storage classes deploy deploying your uh, storage in multiple locations or multi regions the differences between uh, deploying in multi regions so let, let's understand about those stuffs and as a part of that so now here uh, we are going to create a storage bucket and let's upload an object to that storage packet so when i say object here for the example i have a uh, uh, few images i'm i'm going to up upload images to the bucket so let's start now i am in my uh, google cloud console okay so choose the right project so within your project first of all you should create budget so as you uh, so, sorry bucket so as you know uh, in order to use google cloud storage uh, all the data are considered as an object that is stored in the container called as bucket so you can create bucket and this buckets are associated to the project so you will be uploading all your objects which is uh, the data into the bucket so in order to do so i'm just going to this navigation menu so you can scroll down okay under storage you would be seeing something like cloud storage okay either you can come here or else uh, and under storage you can choose here or else you can simply search here in the name cloud storage so once you come here to the cloud storage you can create a bucket okay by clicking here you can create a new bucket and that bucket will be associated to this project okay so this uh, this is a container where you will be uploading all the object so you can create a bucket by clicking here the option create bucket and uh, when it comes to the name unlike other uh, instances here you should give a unique name a globally unique name um, say for example if you are giving some common names right it will not allow you to have it say for example if you use test okay just try let's see see the bucket name is already taken we cannot use so the basic concept is here we should use the uh, globally unique name and also um, if you my bucket see so these are the common names right so it's already utilized by someone else so we should give some unique name uh, maybe i just give 369 any number okay this is available so no one is used yet so i'm using in this name uh maybe i can also my bucket i'll add e to it okay my bucket e 369 fine and so once you have uh, given the right name you can come here to continue so location type this is also very important because whenever you are uh, deploying whenever you are uh, placing your bucket the storage right so we should uh, be very clear in which region we should we are going to deploy it host it okay either we can go with a single region or for a high availability we go for a dual region or we can go for multi region let me show you the difference here so if you go with the region uh, basically it is a single region so we can choose any one among the available regions by where say for example if you are uh, choosing iowa your central one then uh, you are deploying your storage at iowa okay but if you are going only iowa okay and if for a high availability if you want to have a high availability then you can go with dual region but again uh, when it comes to dual region it should be within one particular uh, continent okay either you can um, have a dual region set up within america or within europe or within asia uh, and maybe i'm just going with america itself so if you are uh, going to deploy uh dual region then just i'm i'm just selecting america i, I just want to deploy in america so it will be uh, listing out all the available regions here okay uh, again it it will not show you all the regions which is available in america uh, in order to provide you the low latency it will be show you only the uh, uh, specific set of regions okay among the available you can choose any two maybe if i take two 
so among the uh, available regions you can choose any two if you are going with dual region you cannot proceed with one uh, one region here okay so if you select here it will not uh, allow you to go with uh, proceed further okay it will ask you to choose the other one also so if you are going for a dual region then you can choose two regions under one continent and if you want to have a multi region then you can click multi region which it means is the same thing the same storage would be deployed in multiple regions within the same continents so in the previous one this will be uh, in this uh, dual region you uh, you will be deploying uh, your storage only in two regions in within the continent however in a multi region it will be deployed in across uh, across the continent in multiple regions so if you are uh, choosing us multiple regions in united states so basically uh, what you are defining is you are deploying your storage across multiple regions that is available in united states fine so as it's a demonstration i'm just going with a single region and let it be with the default iowa okay then just click here to continue so this is very important uh, which we have discussed in couple of uh, videos before uh, about the storage classes so we have understood about there are uh, four storage classes one is standard near line code line and archive so as you know uh, if you want to uh, deploy if you want to uh, if if you want to access the data very frequently then you can go with standard type and if you have a data which you will access only once a month uh, like that frequency then you can go with near line and if you have a data that uh, you'll be accessing once in a quarter that kind of frequency then you can choose for cold line and uh, if you if you want to access the data only yearly once in that kind of a situation you can go with archive so we have detailedly um, discussed about this in couple of videos before however in this video let's understand about the pricing structure which we have uh, i have uh, dis uh, discussed in that video okay i told that uh, when it comes to the storage cost there are two cost involved one is storage cost and the other one is retrieval cost so uh, it was told to that it was told that uh, in a standard the storage cost is uh, high comparing to this three and the retrieve cost is less uh, so let let i'll show you how to do it so i have cho choosed standard by default and you can estimate your monthly cost by clicking here so if you see here uh, here you can give a uh, how much data you are going to use uh, maybe for example i just give 100 gp okay uh, i'm just telling that i'm going to use 100 gp as a storage and uh, if you see here uh, uh, they cost us they charge 0 0.020 dollars per gp okay which cost you around uh, two dollars for 100 gp per month this is the storage cost where you are paying and uh, just consider that as uh, uh, See, basically standard is where you are accessing the data very frequently maybe daily ones like that <coughs> so i am just considering that my retrieval data would be 500 gp okay so if i daily access something and daily i download something for a month i would uh, download 500 gp so that is the idea behind it if you see here the download rate or the retrieval cost is free so uh, they are not charging anything for the retrieval however for storing the data they charges 0 0.020 dollars per gb okay uh, and it cost you around two dollars on the whole and also if you want you can change it to your currency or country currency as well maybe just for example if i want to show you in indian rupees i can show i can change it see it cost me around 159 rupees per month if i want to uh, store 100 gb data under standard uh, option then it cost me 159 rupees and because only storage cost is uh, chargeable however this retrieval uh, data retrieval is free okay again let me change it to us dollar Right. So uh, this is how you can change to your currency accordingly. Maybe for a comparison of each uh, storage class, let me uh, take a snip. 
Okay, maybe I'll just take a snipe. Okay, and I'll copy it to MS Bain. Okay, for a differentiation, I'll mention here as like. Standard. Okay. Maybe it will be red color. Fine. And I am just going back to the console once again. Now I am just choosing near line. So if you see here, now it is showing like 0, 0 0.0 to 0 dollars per GB, right? If I choose near line, it would be much less. See, now it charges only 0 0.0. .0 one zero dollars per gb and also when it is a near line uh, means basically i'm going to access the data only once a month so i won't uh, access for 500 gb maybe 100 gb is fine okay and uh, if you see here in earlier in the standard mode it was free the retrieval cost is free however now it cost me around 0 0.010 dollars per gb okay and on the whole again it is two dollars let me uh take a snip of this also let me take uh the screenshot this using snip snipping tool for all the four options let's compare it and it would be easy for us to understand how each pricing model differs okay this is Okay, near line. Okay, this is near line, and again, I'm going to back my console. Okay, now let me choose the code line. So, as you know, code line uh, is an option where you'll access the data once in a quarter. Okay, and if you see the storage cost is much less uh, from 0 0.010 uh, dollars, it comes down to 0 0.004 dollars per gb and however the retrieval cost is getting increased here okay and let me take a snip of the, this as well This is cold line. And the last one is archive. So I'm again coming back to my console. If I'm choosing archive, if you see from uh, 0 0.004, now it again, it come to 0 0.00 one two dollars per gb and however the retrieval cost is again increasing per gb okay let me again take a name of this let me copy come to my mess paint let me paste it here okay fine so this is our cave. Okay, this is our cave. So let's understand about the differences. You see here in standard the store the as i said there are two costs involved one is storage and retrieval if you see the storage cost for 100 gb or uh, 1 gb the storage cost is 0 0.020 dollars per gb however when it comes to near line it's gradually decreasing okay and once again when you come to uh, from near line to core line if you see here it's further decreased and when it comes to archive it's the least price for the storage cost 
okay so basically the storage cost will be very high in standard and uh, comparing uh, comparing to standard near line would be less and comparing to both in standard and near line cold line will be uh, having a less storage cost however rk would be uh, having the very least storage cost comparing to all the three and when it comes to uh, data retrieval it is the vice versa okay and if you see in standard there is no cost for retrieve however in near line they are charging you 0 0.10 dollars per gb in near line and in cold line they are charging you 0 0.020 gb per sorry uh, 20 dollars per gb however in rk they are charging you 0 0.0 50 dollars per gb so here the retrieving cost is gradually increasing okay however the storage cost is gradually decreasing from standard to archive and uh, the retrieve cost is gradually increasing from standard to archive so th this is how um, the cost involvement is and you should be very careful in choosing the right classes based on the requirement so if you have something uh, if you want to upload some data and you'd be uh, accessing it daily so please go with standard or if you would access it only monthly once kind of frequency then please go with near line and if you would access it only quarterly once then you can choose cold line and if you uh, access only yearly once then you can choose archive fine so for a demonstration i'm just going with standard and click continue here and uh, the prevent public access let's discuss about this uh, prevent public access in detail in our uh, next video where uh, we'll discuss about the access control list on a very high level if you go with this uh, by by preventing the public access you will you will not uh, you know you cannot expose this data to the internet or uh, it is not available to the any users from internet okay public access cannot be possible fine and access control there are two kind of access control one is uniform and the other one is uh, fine grained let me go with fine grained now and as i told in the next video when we are going to discuss uh, when we discuss about access control let's uh, let's see in detail about uh, this public access preventing public access and uh, uniform and fine grained so as of now i'm just going with fine grained click continue okay protection and uh, data encryptions and all i'm just going with the default one and click create so once you click create your bucket would be created so see our bucket is created and we are inside our bucket in the name of my bucket e369 okay maybe you can just go back to the bucket console and see this is the bucket that we have created and we can see the date of creation the region is this a single region or multi-region or uh, dual region you'd be seeing that information and as it as i chose the single region that information is available here and you can see what kind of the storage classes you have selected okay and access control i have chosen fine grained okay i have not chosen the uniform one fine so as of now no protection fine let me get into my bucket so now basically for our project we have created one bucket under the cloud storage and we are going to upload the data inside this bucket so when i say data it is referred as object here inside the bucket so i'm inside the bucket i'm just going to upload the file by clicking the upload files here. so this is where you can upload the files you can click here upload files and you can add any uh, data the objects to the bucket so i have few images maybe let me upload this images first let me upload one image and uh, I'll show you so if you see, if you see here it is completed it's showing us like completed okay minimize it so it is uploaded now so as i said this is considered as an object here within the budget uh, buc uh, bucket and uh, we can have all the informations about it maybe if you can click here you can access and you can have more informations about the object which you created and if you scroll down little you can have a information about it
So once you click that uh, object, you can see the, uh, if it is in JPEG uh, kind of an image or dot PNG, you can see that data which we have uploaded. So as I have uploaded an image, I'm seeing that image of mountain, Mount Kailash. Okay. And uh, so this is an image. And also if you see here, we'd be having a information about the data which we have uploaded here. And um, say, for example, if you want to, uh, you'll be seeing something like an authenticated URL here. You can just click here. And if you go here and see, you can access that uh, data, the object using this link. Okay. See, uh, the reason why I'm able to access it is I'm just connecting with the same admin uh, account if uh, if in case i'm trying to access with using the other account uh, maybe j i'll just open my other web browser and let me access i have not yet uh, logged in through any gmail account let me check i'll show you it should not so it it, it is popping up to log into the uh, gmail account let me try to log in through different uh, gmail account and i'll show you what happens so basically without creating access or without uh, giving access to the account you cannot access you cannot see the data so that's what it is See, I have uh, I have now logged into my Gmail account, and if I try to access that link, I cannot access it. It's forbidden, and we're getting an error four zero three. However, when I try to access the same link through this account, which I have logged in, it is allowing me to access. So this comes under in access control. Let's uh, discuss about that in the next video. Okay. So this is how you can upload uh, objects to your buckets. Okay, maybe I'll show you how to upload it once again. Maybe let me try to upload upload files and I'll upload another mountain. It's getting uploaded. So once it's uploaded, you can see that it uh, the object is uploaded here and you can see the information about the uh, object. Okay. The reason why we were unable to access it from the public is it is not public one. So we'll discuss about that part in the next video in detail about access controllers. So basically this is how you can create your cloud storage and um, you can create your bucket and within a bucket you can upload an object. And also if you want to download it, you can click here to download it. You can click here to download okay so this is about uploading and downloading the objects to the bu bucket and this bucket is associated to the this project okay and see so we have created a bucket and under that bucket we have uploaded the object in our next video let's discuss about access control and we'll proceed accordingly we'll, we'll proceed from here